He was born in a Bedouin tent, came to power in a coup, and for more than 40 years, Muammar Gaddafi has stood as one of the most bizarre characters on the world stage. But while his team of virgin female bodyguards and shifting political allegiances gave an eccentric mystique, Gaddafi ruled Libya like any other tyrant. And after years of oppression, a revolution exploded there just over a week ago. Yesterday, Qaddafi's own sons insisted to our Christian Amanpour that there is no revolution and denied using military force against their own citizens. But this is video taken today, about 30 miles from the capital of Tripoli, posted on YouTube, and it shows something very different. It is why President Obama has called for Qaddafi to step down, sent warships into the region, and ordered the seizure of $30 billion in Libya assets. This intense fighting was going on just as Christiane was making her way to sit down with the colonel himself. And she has an exclusive interview with the longtime leader of a nation on the brink. Our day began high over the Libyan capital, Tripoli, in a helicopter ride organized to prove that the city is calm and remains under Gaddafi's control. Even though opponents are closing in, having seized nearby towns as well as most of eastern Libya. Shortly after we touched down in one of the neighborhoods we had just flown over, a family was burying one of at least nine protesters who had been shot to death here last week. The mourners began chanting, Beware Gaddafi, you too soon will be buried here. But in other parts of the city are the chants. These people were shouting for Gaddafi, as they were waiting in long lines around the banks for a handout from their leader, about $450 or one month's salary. Meantime, and Colonel I'm Gaddafi himself had yet to give an interview when we were suddenly called to meet him this evening. He drove up to this restaurant on the Mediterranean coast wearing his trademark flowing robes and gold-rimmed aviator sunglasses, looking every inch the larger-than-life character that he has carefully honed over 41 years in power. How are you? It's good to meet you. I'm Christiana Manfour, ABC. More than anything, his people wanted us to see that Gaddafi is not hiding and has not fled, but remains here in Tripoli perhaps his last stronghold. He showed no signs of a siege mentality. That's perhaps because he remains utterly unconvinced that there is an uprising against him. No demonstration at all in the streets. No, no one against us. Against me for what? Because I am not president. But, but, but then... They love me, all my people with me. They love me all. But if they do love they, you... They, they will die to, to protect me and my, my people. If, no, no. If, if you say they do love you, then why are they capturing Benghazi and they say they're against you there? Why are they in Syria? It is Guida, it is Guida, it is Guida, not my people, it is Guida. Guida, 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 yes. Colonel Gaddafi, the President of the United States, the leaders of Britain and other leaders are calling on you to step down, to leave Libya, to leave your position of power. Will you do that? <laughs> Who would leave his homeland? Why do I leave my homeland? Why do I leave Libya? They say that they do, they've done it because you have ordered force against your people, shooting of protesters. This is lying, 100%. They say that you ordered air attacks against people, against civilians and helicopter gunships. Your own pilots, Air Force pilots, at least two, have defected, saying that they did not want to carry out orders against the people. Did you give such orders? The terrorists were directed to the ammunition storage to take the weapons and distribute it amongst themselves. So the orders were given to strike these places with planes so the weapons don't get in the hands of the terrorists. The international community is concerned about stockpiles of mustard gas or other kind of chemical weapons. Would you ever use those? 
First of all, this problem, we fixed it a while ago with Britain and America, we finished it. Is it even possible for a person to use chemical weapons against his own enemy in this modern age, let alone his own people? Along with two British journalists, I asked him whether he had ordered the Lockerbie bombing, which killed more than 200 Americans more than two decades ago, as his former justice minister is now claiming. Gaddafi would not give a direct answer. This is a door to a conversation we are finished with. I am not prepared to walk between graves. But despite Lockerbie, Gaddafi was brought in from the cold several years ago after giving up his weapons of mass destruction. The United States and other countries lifted sanctions and started doing business with Gaddafi again. Do you feel betrayed by the United States? How do you account for how they are towards you now, today? Of course, it's a betrayal, a big betrayal. And there are no manners, it's silliness, beyond silliness, that the world can base their decisions on media reports. Is it possible that the world's decisions are being based on these reports? Political decisions. They should be looking for the truth of what is happening on the ground in Libya. Then make their decisions. We asked him what he thought of President Obama. My opinion I've said before on many occasions. I believe he was a good young man. I supported his international policies and the relationship between the two countries has changed. But it seems he's been misinformed and I can't believe the statements he has made. He said he thought outside powers wanted to recolonize Libya and he vowed to fight off any invaders alongside the Libyan people. For Nightline, I'm Christiana Manpour in Tripoli.